Now, this evening, very briefly, we'll be looking at the power of thoughts. The power of thoughts. I'll call it the key of thoughts. In the school of success, your thoughts constitute a very powerful key in actualizing your dream of success. Remember in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, he said, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. It shall not depart out of your mouth. And whatever comes out of your mouth is nothing but an expression of your thoughts. Matthew 12, 34. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That means in the school of success, the key of thoughts is a vital key. Solomon said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. You can't think one thing and become another. What you think is what you become. You can't think failure and suddenly become a success. And you can't truly think success and end up a failure. So it is your thoughts that either make you or breaks you. One of the greatest success stories in Bible history is recorded in Genesis chapter 11 when people set themselves up to be the tower whose top will reach unto heaven. And when God was reviewing the situation, he made a very vital statement. In chapter 11 verse 6, And now this they began to do and nothing can be refrained from them which they had imagined to do. So the validity of their success was rooted in their imagination which they had imagined to do. Whatever is too big for your Im imagination is too big for your ma manifestation. Whatever is too big for your imagination is too big for your manifestation. Whatever is too big for your imagination is too big for your manifestation. It is actually your imagination that sets the pace for your destination. So where you find yourself tomorrow is a function of your thoughts today. Your thoughts today defines your placement tomorrow. You have done everything. I'm not sure you have done this enough. That's why the Bible says, I believe that the heart of man is deep and desperately wicked who can know it. Inside them is sinking, no one can really make it in Nigeria. At the same time, he's working to make it. And God, I, God, I search the heart and I know the reins to make it happen to everyone according to his thoughts. Inside his heart is that except you know somebody in Nigeria, any of the top men, business is an impossible venture. So all his business began crashing because he doesn't know anybody. And the people he knows are not strong enough. So he has problems. 
That's why I said the heart of man is deep and desperately wicked. That means most people's problems is rooted in the ongoings of their heart. He said, I, the Lord, I sat the heart and I know the reins to give unto everyone according to his ways and according to the fruits of his doings. Jeremiah chapter 17. That's God's word that your thoughts play a most vital role in determining your success in life. That is most of man's frustration. It's traceable to the ongoings in his heart. Verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Jeremiah 17 verses 9 and 10. This is very important. And now this they began to do, and nothing can be refrained from them which they had imagined to do. When your imagination is established, your destination is secured. When your imagination is established, your destination is secure. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Out of the abundance of the mouth. I don't have access to your heart, but at least I can hear your words. And what you say is a betrayer of what you think. What you say is a direct expression of what you think. But remember the Bible said, out of the abundance. So it's not everything you say. There are more you didn't say. But at least what you say is a pointer to part of what you are thinking. It's an overflow of your thoughts. It's deeper than that. God only knows the details. But I can have some ideas. If I stay with you in 24 hours, I can tell whether you are heading for success or heading for a crash. I don't believe in failure, so I don't, I don't think it. Because I don't think it, I can't say it. It's important. Many prayer warriors are weary because fundamental issues are out of place. Now, no matter how hard you pray and how many days you fast, the Bible says that a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So your fasting can't break scriptures, for the scriptures cannot be broken. The scriptures cannot be broken. The scriptures cannot be broken. So I want to encourage you today. Keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. What life offers you is traceable absolutely to what goes on in your heart or what makes up your thoughts. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. He said, therefore, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. There is more to success than hard work. There is more to success than skill. There is more to success than strength. There is more to success than a strong will. One of the vital keys in the school of success is what I've shared with you briefly tonight. The key of success thoughts. You think success to truly succeed. You think success to truly succeed. It's not enough to be working at success. You must possess an attitude that guarantees success. You want success so you can be a blessing. And then you think success. You don't allow impossibility to be cloud your mind. If God can handle it, then I can because he lives in me. If God will make it in this kind of circumstance, then I will make it because he's with me. If God cannot fail under this situation, then I cannot fail because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. 
That is how to consolidate your success thoughts. You size up every challenge with God. Every what? You size up every challenge with God. David said, you have come to me with spear and spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. I don't have the kind of weapons you have, but I have a kind of God you don't have. Even today, my God will bring down your head. Did he bring that head down or not? Now, every barrier before you will give way this week. I said, this month, everything that is carrying your destiny will bow at your feet. David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Not in my name. I don't have what it takes to meet you, but he does. God who gave me the lion and the bears, he will give you to me today. So David knew it was God who gave him the lion. He knew it was God who gave him the beard. So he headed on for Goliath. So success thoughts is traceable to your absolute dependency on God. You are absolutely dependent on God for results. Absolutely. David stepped out against Goliath and he brought down his big head. Every Goliath that is scaring and defiling your destiny and torturing your destiny in one way or another, you are bringing their head out here for a testimony this month. Can I hear your loud amen? I've seen many skillful people become great failures. Many strong people have crashed under their own weight. But if God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, who can be against you? I'd like you to know at this point, God is never to blame as per your very situation now. It is one thing you lack that you, have yet, you are yet to recover, discover that's the reason for where you are. And when you discover and apply yourself to it, the heavens will open over your head. The end has come to every frustration in your life. I'd like you to please take note of this. Your thoughts are much more vital than your works. It is your thoughts that give value to your works. So when your thoughts are negative, it negates the effect of your work. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Is it in your Bible that by strength shall no man prevail? That means strength is not a principal factor in the school of success. It's not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. That means your will is not a major factor in the school of success. He said, I, I looked under the sun and I discovered that the battle is not to the strong, neither yet race, the race to the swift, neither yet favor to men of skill. That means your smartness is not a principal factor in the school of success. But your thoughts is rated far above your strength, far above your skill, far above your smartness, far about everything you are capable of doing. May your thoughts allow your destiny to come to light. The truth is this. The only impossible land is a land that you are walking by yourself. When you are walking in with God, every land is a land of possibility. Every business is a business of possibility. Wherever you are placed by God, it's a place that must open to you by his hand. So wake up and let it work. Wake up and let it work. Wake up and let it work. So before you think of your acts, the things you do, watch your attitude, watch your thoughts, and this too will give appropriate value to your acts. Without the right attitude, the right thoughts, all of your arts stand to be negated without any effect. 
I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that this brief charge will set a new pace for your life. Rise to your feet, everybody. One thing thou lackest. One thing. And when he showed him that thing, he was very angry. And he went away sorrowful. He went away what? Sorrowful. He hated to discover what he lacked. So he went away sorrowful. He hated it. How can you tell me this ordinary thing? What of all the other ones I've been doing? How can this ordinary thing cancel the effect of all the other things I'm doing? He went away sorrowful. He went away sorrowful. A man came here, one of us, I mean, uh, gave his testimony. He had a first class in mathematics. How many remember the testimony? First class in mathematics. And for 17 years, he was a practical expression of failure. 17 years, he was totally frustrated until he met Jesus here. I'm sure you know what first class in mathematics means. Neither yet favor to men of skill. The battle is not to the strong, neither the race to the swift. Neither yet favor to men of skill. He met Jesus here and he turned his destiny around. There is more to life than strength skill than smartness you need to understand what makes it work and this book is a creator's manual designed to give his creature the best of experience on earth your thoughts either make you or break you lift up those two hands receive from heaven grace to protect your heart against every form of corruption that tend to frustrate destiny. This is vital. This is important. Pray that prayer for yourself. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The Bible says, therefore, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it, are the issues of life. God is more than enough to get you through to where you are going. Lift up your voices. Pray for grace from heaven to protect your heart from every thought that leads to frustration and failure. Glory to the Lamb of God. Pray that prayer over your life. Lord, grace to protect my heart from every negative thought, every thought that breeds failure and frustration, I receive that grace now. In Jesus' precious name. This book is designed to purify our thoughts. To do what? To make us think in line with God's thoughts. This is God's thoughts in print. My ways are not your ways, and neither are my thoughts your thoughts. So when you get addicted to this book, it sanctifies your thought, brings it into line with the way God thinks, and that makes life very colorful for you. This is a mind cleanser. What do I call it? This cleanses the mind. It purifies the mind. It makes the mind operate at God's own frequency. And that makes the journey great any day, anywhere, and any time. I read from this book that God is no respecter of persons. And to cause to me, God is no respecter of persons or colors or nationalities. But in every nation, that gave me all the confidence that whatever God would do anywhere else in the world, He would do with me wherever He has positioned me. So there is no green pasture anywhere than where God is. And that made a lot of impact on my life. I read in my Bible that the same God over all is rich unto all that call upon him. There is no difference between the Jews and the Greek, between the white and the black. Oh, God's word is a mind cleanser. He sanctifies the mind. 
and makes you think in line with God's thoughts. And that makes the journey great any day, anywhere, anytime. So to keep your mind pure, this is it. To sanctify your mind, this is it. It's not all those junk papers you are reading every day. Some people, if the time you spend on some of those junk materials, one tenth of that time is spent on this book, you'll be ten times more than where you are now. I know I'm a local pastor, I'm primitive, but I'm enjoying it anyway. This is the book that forms my fundamental news every day. You write about me in paper, you are wasting time because I don't have time for it. You show it to me like this, doesn't make meaning. You are in your business and I know my business. My business is here. Amen. That's where it is. In Jesus' precious name, amen.